Prime Minister is meeting Boris Johnson today in Downing Street. They'll be discussing uh, tourism, climate change, COVID, the migrant crisis. I expect they'll also be discussing what are known in the British debate as the Elgin marbles. Mm. Um, or Parthenon marbles. The Parthenon sculptures. Yeah, the Prime... And the, the Greek Prime Minister is with us here. Yes, Kyriakos Mitsotakis. And it's um, very lovely to have you well, in the studio. Good morning. Thanks for having me. It's pretty extraordinary that we have the Greek Prime Minister in the studio when we haven't seen the British Prime Minister <laughs> in the studio. Shall I put in a good word for you <laughs> when I see you him? You could. OK, I'll do that. Because yeah. it has been yeah. literally years since we last interviewed Boris Johnson. Well, just give me just give me some available slots and maybe I can negotiate something. Tell like him that. that you didn't yeah. hide in a big fridge freezer, but instead you came on the programme <laughs> to talk about the big issues facing the nation. Yes. And You'll we... know what we mean. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you his feedback <laughs> when I see you next time. <laughs> and I expect we'll see you yeah. next time before we see him. Uh, but the programme is always um, open to him. So it's absolutely lovely to have you in the studio this morning. And, and lots of really interesting issues to talk to you about. Firstly, I want to talk to you about the migrant crisis. Um, Greece has its own uh, migrant crisis. This morning, I'm, I'm not sure if you've uh, been able to see, but our reporter, Jonathan Swain, he's been out in the channel this morning and spotted these three men on a kayak trying to make the journey from France over to Britain. Mm. Uh, and, frankly, we watched them this morning. Because of the strength of the tides, they're going round in circles, and they've had to... Uh, Jonathan Swain's uh, crew has had to call emergency services in. What is Greece doing about the many migrants who make the dangerous journey towards your islands? Well, we've seen... Uh, uh, we see similar images almost uh, uh, daily as desperate people try to cross um, uh, from Turkey um, uh, to the Greek islands. Uh, we've been rather vigilant uh, in terms of uh, protecting our borders, while at the same time uh, respecting fundamental rights. We are, on a daily basis, uh, saving uh, tens, if not hundreds, of people uh, at, uh, at sea, while mm -hmm. at the same time trying to break the smugglers' networks. Uh, what people need to understand is that this is a very, very dangerous uh, trip. Uh, and unless you manage uh, to send a clear signal that you protect your borders, more people will try to um, enter uh, into Greece or, you know, into the UK, uh, eventually uh, illegally. And for us, this is a very, very important topic. Uh, we cannot have uh, a Schengen zone, which is a zone of free movement of people, mm -hmm. unless we, return, we protect uh, the union's uh, external borders. And this is what we're trying to do rather effectively, I would argue, because migrant uh, um, uh, and refugee flows are down significantly over the past two years. Do you turn the boats back? We inter That's one of the controversial issues. Is we, we, what we, is your obligation to we those intercept, people? We intercept the boats. Right. We always um, um, try to, uh, and very effectively, I would argue, save people whose lives uh, is, uh, is in danger. But uh, we will call on the Turkish Coast Guard to do its job in accordance with the agreement that the EU has signed with Turkey. I mean, we see Turkey as a partner uh, in this, and they can clearly do more um, to break uh, uh, the smugglers' networks uh, and uh, uh, intercept the boats before they actually reach uh, Greek uh, territorial uh, waters. I think the UK thought that being not just outside Schengen but outside the European Union would make it easier for us to police our borders. That was certainly the promise in the referendum campaign, and uh, it's proving quite difficult outside the EU as well. What's your reflection oh, um, policing, on the, the UK position now? What will you oh, tell Boris Johnson? Policing, uh, policing a sea border is uh, always a very, very complicated um, uh, exercise. Uh, uh, when it comes to... I can only draw on the, on, on the Greek um, uh, experience. We have a land border with Turkey. We have a sea border with, uh, with, with Turkey. We're always very concerned uh, when we see um, uh, countries um, using migration for geopolitical purposes. Look what's happening, for example, now between Belarus, Poland and the Baltic uh, uh, states. Uh, we saw uh, a similar uh, incident happening in Greece in March 2020, uh, when Turkey tried to put more pressure on the European Union, threatening us with a 
essentially encouraging tens of thousands of people to cross, cross into Greece. Uh, we said no. Um, uh, we protected uh, our border. The instant, uh, this instant was never uh, repeated. Uh, uh, so one needs to obviously um, uh, work um, uh, with uh, neighboring countries. And I'm sure that uh, the UK needs to work with France to uh, address this problem. And we try to work um, uh, with Turkey as productively uh, as we can. And we call on Turkey to honor its end of the bargain because it has signed a deal with the European uh, Union uh, and it can do much more uh, to contain um, uh, illegal um, uh, smuggling. And at the same time, one needs uh, legal entries uh, into, into Europe. Uh, for example, Greece, we're a relatively you know, medium-sized country, but we have uh, welcomed uh, more than 700 Afghani um, uh, women and their families uh, uh, in what I consider to be an important uh, humanitarian uh, act. Uh, we have uh, granted more than 50,000 uh, um, uh, rights to asylum right. uh, over the past two years. So it's very difficult to accuse Greece of not being humanitarian in addressing this problem. At the same time, I have an obligation to protect my borders, so I think we have a tough but fair migration policy. And how about protecting um, Greece um, from the threat of climate change? Because obviously, you know, the, um, the geography of Greece means that you are um, very affected by yeah. um, what's happening to, to, to sea levels, but also you've had um, the impact of drastic climate change through the, the fires which have been ravaging Greece. Um, how did you feel at the, the end of the COP talks when India and China well, kind of changed the rules of the game? Is it, is it frustrating? Will you...? It's, I think it's a bittersweet feeling. Uh, I mean, I, I would have to congratulate uh, uh, Boris Johnson on putting together, uh, you know, a, a very, you know, it's a, it's a very complicated project to have, you know, uh, so many countries trying to negotiate an agreement. Uh, obviously, we would have uh, liked uh, um, for some countries to be more uh, ambitious. I can tell you what Greece is doing. First of all, the Eastern Mediterranean uh, is a hotspot for climate change. Mm -hmm. We saw it with uh, drastic wildfires, dramatic uh, wildfires this, um, uh, this summer. Uh, what we're trying to do is, first of all, move away from coal as quickly as possible. We will shut down uh, all our coal-fired coal, fired coal um, electricity plants by 2023, bar one, uh, and we will be completely off coal the latest by 2028. Uh, we're trying to protect our more sensitive uh, ecosystems, our islands. Uh, we try to move our smaller islands towards carbon neutrality uh, at a much uh, um, faster pace. Mm -hmm. We've set up a separate ministry um, for um, uh, climate um, uh, crisis and civil protection. So we need to do more in terms of prevention, making sure that uh, uh, we contain wildfires before they become um, uh, too large and too uh, devastating. And we want to be at the forefront uh, of the climate change uh, discussion and play a leading role within the European debate. Um, what's the situation currently with how you're tackling COVID? Um, it, we've seen a, a really worrying rise in countries in Western Europe, uh, Germany, the Netherlands, then Austria has just introduced a lockdown for the unvaccinated. How are you getting on with vaccinations? And and for you know, you rely a lot on UK tourism, don't you? What would you say to British tourists who want to come back to Greece? Well, um, first of all, we were very happy uh, to welcome um, the British tourists during the summer. We had a relatively successful summer season. Uh, I think it was around two and a half million um, British tourists who came to Greece. Greece is a lovely country. I would encourage <laughs> you to book your holidays uh, for next year as quickly as possible. No, uh, I think it's going to be a COVID-free summer. Um, um, uh, but right now, you're right to point out that we are facing a spike uh, in, uh, in cases. I think it's a, it's a European phenomenon. If you look at Greek um, vaccination rates, they're hovering around the EU uh, uh, average. We're trying to uh, encourage obviously uh, unvaccinated people to get vaccinated. How do we do that? Uh, we've made it more difficult for unvaccinated people to access uh, restaurants. So you cannot have uh, an indoor dinner uh, in Greece now if you are uh, unvaccinated. So there's vaccine passports. There are vaccine passports and they and would work. Would that apply to UK travellers? Um, uh, uh, in, in, uh, in case they would come to, uh, to Greece, uh, it would uh, apply to, to anyone coming to Greece at present. Uh, but it, you don't need actually a strict vaccine passport to get into the country, but of course the rules apply uh, to anyone. Uh, we rely heavily on testing. 
So if you want to eat outdoors and if you are unvaccinated, we need uh, a negative um, uh, test. And what we've seen over the past two weeks is uh, a significant uptake uh, in vaccination uh, rates. So right. we believe that this strategy is an effective strategy. Obviously, our uh, national health system is under uh, yeah. a lot of uh, pressure and we're trying to help doctors and nurses uh, address uh, this spike. But we need to make it very clear. When I look at my intensive care beds now, yeah. uh, almost nine out of ten uh, people who are in intensive care beds are unvaccinated vaccinated uh, and it's a pity mm. it's, it's a real yeah. pity that people uh, you know lose yeah. their lives because they don't make the simple choice sure. uh, of getting um, okay. of getting vaccinated so we have a strict policy but we will not go mm. as far mm. as uh, Austria uh, but to uh, impose uh, you a know lockdown. a full a full lockdown you rule on that unvaccinated out. Okay. Uh, people. our Prime Minister likes his holiday so I'm sure he'll be um, thinking of potentially a Greek trip next year when you meet him but uh, but he also likes Greek history. I'm sure you'll be discussing the Parthenon sculptures, the, the Elgin uh, marbles. I'm, I'm Do glad, you think you've I'm got a you're... chance... Is there a chance of persuading this classicist Prime Minister here in Britain to start thinking in a different way about um, the Elgin marbles? Well, he, sh he, he, he should. I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a lover of, um, uh, of classical Greece. Why are they here? Uh, well, I mean, they're, I, here I say, they're here because... Personally, I don't understand this. I they're, mean, here, you know, they're here because they were stolen by well, Lord Elgin. That's uh, debated. Stolen or legal. Uh, but in the end... Uh, but at the end of the day, this is not a legal uh, argument. And I don't like to talk about the return of the marbles. I like to talk about the reunification of the marbles. I would encourage you um, to have one of your shows in the Parthenon yeah. Museum, yeah. where you will see um, um, half of the, the Parthenon frieze, which is what you, what you show, um, uh, in, a, in a lovely modern museum... Is there a deal right, to be done? ..right under the, under the Acropolis. So is there a deal we are to be done? advocating for the reunification of the marbles. I will be making my case um, uh, to the British... Uh, Prime Minister, and I think that the, the general approach that uh, you know, th these marbles belong to the British Museum because they've always been there is slightly anachronistic. Are there things that you could kind of um, loan back or give back to the UK? Is, we is can there a deal, a trade? We can certainly, first of all, we want, you know, uh, we, we want, uh, you know, the sculptures back for good. Um, so we will not settle for a loan. But what we can offer uh, is certainly an arra arrangement where we could offer to the British Museum um, artefacts uh, and treasures that have never left the country uh, as part of a rotating uh, collection. So if there's a will, uh, I'm sure we can find a, a solution. And what, what better demonstration uh, of uh, a global uh, Britain <laughs> but uh, on the 200th anniversary of the beginning of the War of Independence, uh, the Great Britain to make such a generous gesture towards the Greek people. I reckon this Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, he's your best chance. So, um, good luck. If you can't persuade him, I'm not sure you'll persuade anybody. Thank you, Prime Minister, for coming and talking to us today. It's been Thank you. great to you to talk. Thank you very Thank much. You so Thanks much. for having me. Good to see you.